This is it. My dad was here in the late spring of 1990. He had circulation problems in his leg. And the doctors turned one of his veins into an artery and fixed him up. Amazing. Well, of course, it didn't look like this then. Then, it looked like this. The Mary Hitchcock Hospital on the Dartmouth campus in Hanover, New Hampshire. Four stories high, hundreds of rooms. Doctors, nurses, administration people, professors, clinicians, maintenance people, food service, pharmacists, orderlies, and patients, of course. Over the years, hundreds of thousands of people used this facility. Brick and mortar and stone and steel and glass and millions of dollars. Most felt it would be here forever. But it wasn't here forever. It was, in fact, here for less than 100 years, since 1893, when Hiram Hitchcock paid a lot of money to create a hospital as a memorial to his late wife, Mary. Now, Hiram Hitchcock was a New Hampshire guy born in Claremont. And Hiram had made a pile of money in the New York hotel business, and then at the age of 34, had come back to New Hampshire to live the life of a gentleman. He and Mary bought an estate. And Hiram became a state legislator, a trustee of Dartmouth College, and the president of two banks. Hiram Hitchcock was 60 years old when his wife died, 1891. Mary had been not only his wife, but also his partner and best friend. Hitchcock's grief turned out to be Dartmouth's gain. A hospital, Hiram Hitchcock felt, would be the perfect memorial to his wife. And so it was built. It cost $200,000. And in 1893, the hospital was dedicated to the memory of Mary Hitchcock. It was a very, very uh, advanced, state-of-the-art building for its day. Uh, not only was it completely fireproof, but a great deal of attention was given to the safety, to the health and convenience of those who both had to work in it, as well as those that uh, were patients there. And so Dartmouth and Hanover and the Connecticut River Valley now had a hospital. And not just a hospital, but a hospital with marble floors, high ceilings and fireplaces, and 36 beds. A lot of people felt this was way too many beds, felt it was overkill, a white elephant. And the fact is, for the first few years, the facility did operate at a loss. And the time was not good for Hiram Hitchcock. He had made some bad investments and could not personally cover the loss. The result was that Mary Hitchcock became a community hospital. Right at the beginning, a nursing school was established. And three years after the hospital was dedicated, an event took place that was to rocket the Dartmouth Medical School to nationwide prominence. For that was the year that the first diagnostic x-ray ever made in the United States took place at the medical school. a dearth of patients early in the hospital's history, by 1907, Mary Hitchcock was overcrowded. So overcrowded that tents had to be erected on the hospital grounds as makeshift wards. Operating rooms were added in 1910, still it was 1913 before a new wing was constructed. Four years later, we were fighting World War I, and doctors and staff at Hitchcock marched off to serve in field units, leaving the hospital understaffed and undersupplied for the duration. After the war, it was a different world. The automobile became a middle-class necessity. Flappers and bootleg gin, movies and radio, and more and more women giving birth, not at home, but in the hospital. In 1920, a new nurse's dormitory, the Billings Lee House, was built. 
and in 1928, a new three-story addition was added to the hospital. And yet, as each expansion was completed, there still wasn't enough space. During the Great Depression, the hospital surprisingly continued to make a small profit. And after the Second World War, a major building fund drive was begun. It was at this time that the hospital's second great benefactor emerged, Mrs. Edward Daniels Faulkner, longtime friend of the hospital, pledged one million dollars. And Faulkner House opened in 1953. It was huge and modern and state-of-the-art. It was overcrowded in no time. And by 1985, it had reached its limit. Parking was a nightmare. Mary Hitchcock had built a reputation as one of the finest hospitals in the world, which also made it one of the most popular. The only way to go was up, build another high-rise and a parking garage. But the Hanover Planning Board said no. The only other alternative was to move Mary Hitchcock from the Dartmouth campus. And so in 1988, ground was broken for an entirely new hospital in next door Lebanon. And in 1991, the new Dartmouth Hitchcock Medical Center opened. And so it was about 5.30, and I drove down North College Street and down Maynard Street, and you see this huge hospital complex dark. And normally at 5.30 at night is when the thing would just be lit up, when everyone was, you know, patients were being fed, you know, shifts were changing, whatever it was. And other than a few, uh, few people standing guard at the front entrance, because doors were still unlocked and whatever, uh, the thing was dark. It was vacant. And, uh, and, and you know, I, I remember thinking at the time it was really a, an error in passing at Hanover for the first time in a little over 100 years did not have a hospital. And Faulkner House on the Dartmouth campus. That's what I'm interested in in medical care. So I, uh, I thought it was exciting. There were a lot of people who didn't. A lot of people who were very sad about it. But buildings, per se, don't invoke that much memory to me. It's, it's the, the institution which moved, and it's the institution that's here. And the, it's the people in it and the service that they give that makes a hospital a hospital, good or bad. And that's it. It had been on the Dartmouth campus just about a hundred years. It seemed indestructible. But after the implosion, they searched the rubble and came up with the original cornerstone. And inside the stone, in a hermetically sealed copper box, they found a time capsule. And in the capsule, among other items, they found a letter in Hiram Hitchcock's handwriting. And the letter said, this hospital at the time of its completion in 1891 will perhaps be the most perfect of its kind in existence. It is a memorial to one of the noblest and best of God's gifts to the human race. God grant that this hospital may be all and more than all that she would have it to be. She was my life here. May God in his infinite mercy unite us again. <laughs>